What's up YouTube, this is Guy. Today I wanted to do what hopefully works out to be a short video talking about how you can adjust and resize your Rolex Oyster style bracelets. Some time ago I did a video talking about resizing Seiko pin and collar bracelets and I've had people ask me could you do a similar video talking about the Rolex Oyster bracelet. So that's what we are going to be working on today. We of course have two examples of uh, Rolex watches that are on Oyster bracelets, my Submariner here, and of course a Rolex Explorer that I have on loan currently. These bracelets are resized more or less the same way, but some of the finer adjustment points are a little bit different, and we're gonna go into both aspects of adjusting and resizing these watch bracelets. I'm also gonna discuss the tools that I use, the ones that I would recommend. They work well for me. Um, there might be better options out there on the market. I don't really know. I'm really happy with the tools that, uh, that I've been using to do bracelet adjustments and resizes. We'll go ahead and show you those tools first then we'll get into the actual adjustment procedures. The number one thing you're gonna need is a really good high quality screwdriver. Both Oyster style bracelets on these watches use a 1.6 millimeter screwdriver head. This is of course a Horatech screwdriver that I got from Esslinger.com if I'm not mistaken. Um, no connection or promotion from Esslinger, it's just where I happen to bought my uh, Horatech screwdrivers from. Um, yeah, I love this screwdriver and I'm gonna show you why. The screwdriver itself is uh, really, really high quality and the bits are changeable. But the important thing about the bit of this screwdriver, and I don't know how well it'll come in on camera, so maybe I'll bring in a picture after the fact. It's called a, what they describe as a T-shape bit. I would call it a hollow ground screwdriver. And what that means is that it's not a straight wedge bit. The, uh, the edges of the bit are kind of rounded out so that the slot or, or the head of the screwdriver fits really nicely into the slot of the screw head on your Oyster bracelet. It's really important if you care about keeping your screw heads in as nice of condition as possible to use the best tool possible. If you don't care if your bracelet edge gets scratched up or if the screw slots get marred up or deformed, then I guess you use whatever you want. But I have never had any problems or damage occur with using this Horatech screwdriver. So I'm gonna stick with this probably forever. You're also gonna need a spring bar tool. I own this Bergeon 6767 and it's a great spring bar tool, but I don't actually use it when I'm working on these watches. Now you probably could and it would function and you'd get the job done, but there is a better spring bar tool for the job that you're going to need especially on one of the um like the explorer here one of the oyster bracelets with uh, an easy link extension you probably won't need a spring bar tool on something like the submariner unless you wanted to take the bracelet off entirely but there's a micro adjust point on the explorer that requires the use of a spring bar tool this probably would do the job but i have something better so this spring bar tool is the bergeon 7825 and it is as you can see a tweezer style spring bar tool uh, the, 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 the heads have these little rubber uh, protector gizmos on them. I'll go ahead and pull this spring bar tool out of its package, remove the little protectors, and uh, if we get in here real close, maybe you'll see that it just you know has little spring bar shaped tips there. This makes it really easy to get in there between the lugs if you're removing the bracelet or to adjust the micro adjust point on the easy link style clasp. You just get in there, squeeze and pull. And uh, yeah, this is the way to go. Very expensive. I wanna say prices on some of these tools, uh, 180 something, 175, $180 on that. This, um, the screwdriver was probably 20 bucks if I'm not mistaken, which is a lot for a little tiny screwdriver. I know you can get little screwdrivers for three, four, five dollars. Just spend the 20 bucks if you're working on watches that are valued at thousands upon thousands of dollars. And then the standard spring bar tool that I showed you guys, you know, that's 15 or 20 dollars as well. If you want to get that one also, I recommend it because you'll find other uses for it. These are the tools that you're probably going to want to get started with to do this procedure and to do it properly. 
Now the first thing to discuss on these watches is the adjustment. There's resizing, which we're going to talk about. That's removing a link from the bracelet or adding a link. And then there's the adjusting. Now we'll start with the Submariner. The Submariner has the glide lock system. So adjusting it is ridiculously easy. I'm going to go over this briefly for anyone that doesn't know. And I know most of you guys do know, but when you open up the clasp, you have on the underside here a system where you flip open that little link and now you can adjust the size in two millimeter, excuse me, two millimeter increments. And then when you get it to where you want it, you just push down and snap it back into place. Actually, I think my adjustment goes there. I kind of use those little, if you can see in their cavities to, uh, you know, remember what size works for me. That's it. That's all there is to the quick adjustment of this particular clasp. So on your Rolex Explorers, any of the watches that feature the Easy Link style clasp extension system, it works a little bit differently. Open up the clasp as normal. And now you have this little fold out extendable half link. So you just pop it up and then fold out that half link and you get five millimeters of extension. You can see the little screw on this link showing and then when we fold it back down and snap it in place, you can see that that little screw is now that much further, basically shortening the overall length of your bracelet. So that is your first adjustable point on this clasp, but there's another one. If we look really closely at the underside of this clasp, you'll see that there's a spring bar right in here on both sides. That spring bar has three little micro adjust slots inside the clasp. It's currently in the middle one. So there's another slot here, or maybe on this side. If I had a, a pointer, this would probably work out better. We have a, a, a micro adjust point here. There's the one that it's in, and then further in, there's another micro adjust point. So with a tweezer tool like I have here, which is the best tool to use, you can also micro adjust this in two millimeter increments, one out or one in. So the way you resize this, or I guess I should say adjust it, is you get in there with your little spring bar tweezer tool, hook up both sides of that uh, spring bar, depress them, and now you can slide it into the next slot. Make sure that you wiggle it around a little bit so that it pops into place. I haven't quite found the notches, there you go. So now, if you get enough light in there, which I do not have presently, I'm on the innermost uh, micro adjustment point. So there's still one there, there's one there. Now I'm on the innermost, so this is gonna be just a hair tighter on the wrist. It's not the greatest system, but certainly it's better than nothing. It's not nearly as good as having something like the glide lock. In conjunction with the easy link and these three points of micro adjustments inside the clasp, you should probably be able to find a comfortable fit on the wrist. So we've covered the types of adjustment that you can do either on the fly with the glide lock or on the fly with the easy link on something like the Explorer and of course the micro adjust inside the Explorer clasp. But what if you buy a watch and you need to add or remove a link? That's really where people kind of get nervous about working on their Rolexes and I get it. I was kind of nervous about it too. You don't want to put scratches on the sides of the links. You don't want to malform or deform the slots of your screws. You want everything to stay in nice condition. I mean, I mean a lot of us do. I know there's going to be plenty of guys that watch this video that say, oh, don't be a baby, who cares, blah, blah, blah. Look, lots of people have asked me about this. It's a concern. Well, it's really not that difficult. And I'm going to go ahead and look at this from the perspective of, let's say uh, you just bought this Rolex Explorer. And let's say you bought it pre-owned, so it didn't have all of its links in it and you needed to add a link and you got the spare link here. How would you safely go about putting this spare link back in? Well, that's what we're gonna cover. So after trying on the watch, let's say you determined that you need to add a link to the 12 o'clock side of the watch. It's really not that difficult, but you gotta be careful. Again, use the correct screwdriver. In this case, I'm using my Horatex screwdriver, which I think is absolutely a fantastic screwdriver. First things first, you have to know that Rolex uses a thread locking solution. The screw head is here, it goes all the way through and it threads into the link over here. Thread locking solution such as Loctiter keeps the th screw from not backing out through friction and vibrations and you know overall daily use. So it's gonna lock those threads up. 
if you put your screwdriver in the head of the uh, bracelet here, and let me try to do this on camera, it's weird without any actual depth perception. Um, so you put your screwdriver in the head of the screw, like so. I know that was sloppy as hell, forgive me. Again, through the viewfinder is difficult. And give it a little bit of finger pressure, turning it counterclockwise. If you don't feel it go pretty easily, don't force it. Just, you know, do not go wrenching on it. In this case, it's pretty tight. So what I would do is use some heat to loosen up that thread locking compound over here. How you decide to go about the heat is up to you. You could use a blow dryer and kind of focus the, the beam onto this point. Um, I've heard of all sorts of manners of how to do this. I'm not going to give any recommendations because you could potentially, you know, damage the the um, the, the link here in the finish, and and I, I don't want to be responsible for that. So think of a creative way, or maybe talk to a watchmaker is probably your best bet. But don't go wrenching on this screw head like crazy if it's too tight. Now in my case, it's really not too tight. I can unscrew it pretty pretty easily. So we'll just start unscrewing it. It is snug. I can feel there's resistance from that thread locking compound. But as you can see, it's coming out pretty easily. Once you get it out about to there, well, you just get in there with your fingers. You might have to give it one more little spin with your fingers to pull it out all the way, uh, if you can get your fingers on it. But there it comes out and the links separate. I'll take a quick look at the thread on this little screw and you can see that white thread locking compound. It's just a little teeny, teeny, tiny <laughs> amount of it. But, uh, but yeah, it's there and it does keep those screws from backing out. Now, once you're ready to fit your link, you're probably going to want to clean the tip of this screw. I use just a little alcohol swab and I clean off all that old thread blocker and you're probably going to want to put some more thread locker on it, but do not apply it directly to the screw. I'm going to explain why. Because you're going to send the screw through the link and there's a channel here. You don't want the thread locking compound to wipe off on the inside of the channel. It could cause the whole screw to seize up. What you want to do is put a little teeny tiny dab in, let's see if I can get it on camera a little bit better here, in the hole where the threads are going to mate. So right in this hole you want to put a dab of Loctite in that hole. So when you put the, the screw all the way through, it's only going to be in there. It's not going to be getting wiped off through the entire channel of the link. Now it's important to know about thread locking compound. I use the, 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 the Loctite brand. It comes in at least that I know of three flavors. It comes in purple, comes in blue, and it comes in red. Absolutely do not use the red, which is permanent, or the blue, which is semi-permanent. Only use the purple low strength and just a teeny, tiny little dab is all you need. Once you apply a little bit of thread locking compound in that, uh, in that cavity, you know, it's as you would expect, super simple. Get your, your thread end going towards the correct direction into the th thread receptacle end on your bracelet. And then with your screwdriver, obviously, just screw it down. Do your best to not fall out of the screw slot. Since I'm doing this on camera, I don't have my bracelet kind of held in a little plastic bracelet watch vise or clamp. That would certainly be helpful, but for all intents and purposes, what I'm doing here to be as visible as possible is, uh, yeah, it's pretty terrible actually, but you get the point. Screw that down nice and snug, and then you're, uh, yeah, you're good to go. When you're getting it to the, to the point where it doesn't want to spin anymore, like I'm at right here, don't, don't crank it down. Again, you'll probably just damage the slot of the screw. The thread locking compound is what's going to hold it in place. It's not torque. You don't need to torque this down. So, you know, be careful. Don't overdo it. That's all it takes. That's it guys, that's really all there is to it. If you need to adjust or resize your Rolex Oyster bracelets, it's super simple. There's really nothing to be scared of. A couple of key points that I want to just reiterate. Um, number one, 
get good tools, get a good screwdriver. If you're gonna be adjusting something with the micro adjusts on uh, an easy link style clasp, such as the one on the Rolex Explorer, use a good spring bar tool to do that so you don't mess something up. Number two, when you're taking out the links, don't force the screws if they're tight. They're tight because they have a thread locking compound on them. Use some heat to loosen up that thread locking compound or take it to a watchmaker if you're not sure. If it can't come undone with pretty light finger pressure, don't force it. When you're putting it back in, if you reapply thread locking compound, only use a low strength thread locking compound like Loctite Purple. And then finally, when you screw the, uh, the screw all the way in to, to, to join the link, don't torque the screw head down. It doesn't need to be super, super tight. The thread locking compound is doing the work. That's what's gonna keep it from backing out. That's really it, guys. Super simple procedure, but I've had a lot of people ask me, is there you know, best practices and a safe way to do this without doing any sort of damage to my watch? That's the way that I do it. I've never had any sort of problems. I, uh, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Well, that's going to wrap this one up for today. As always, thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Don't forget to like this video and, of course, subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. Until the next one, I'm going to sign off and say bye now.